Good evening folks, welcome to the How of Cremar, Paul Anderson here, uh, leading my 20th fiddle workshop um, during the coronavirus pandemic lockdown. Things are slackening up a wee bit here in Scotland. Um, I think they've had something like one death in the last fortnight here, which is pretty good. It's more than a fortnight actually, but um, certainly I think up till now that's been nine days since the last one so so things are, are going to relax slowly but i think the current situation although it's eased up a lot will be in for quite a while and certainly i kind of see only live performances or face-to-face -face workshops for quite a while so so here we are again wednesday night and um get to a workshop i thought on some tunes by captain simon fraser um captain simon fraser was actually a really capable, talented composer um, and it's said about his playing that nobody spoke Gaelic so b beautifully on the fiddle as Captain Simon Fraser and that's quite a compliment um, but um, he's mainly remembered for his, if it's known as the Noki Collection or if it's um, got the longer title Airs and Melodies Peculiar to the Highlands of Scotland and the Islands so it's a snappy title but um, an awful lot of the music that's in that was actually collected by his father and his um, his uncle, who were graziers in the Highlands of Scotland and cattle dealers. So they were, they were travelling around the Highlands and um, like a, it was not unusual at the time for folk to collect stuff. Like a Robert Burns a wee bit later was certainly an example of folk who could see that um, can progress was coming along and there was a real danger of a lot of this material being lost forgotten and um, kind of it would be a great loss to the country so well how many of these tunes were collected by his father and uncle I have no idea but a lot of them so it's a period between 1745 and 1715 where most of these tunes were collected so I'm going to start with one called the rebel the rebel war song or the Jacobite war song and um it supposedly was published in loads of collections about the same time as this. There was no collection that hardly didn't include it. So it, 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 it is actually a song. There is lyrics to it, which I haven't seen. But I think it's one of these ones for it named are the different important clans that were featured. So I thought we'd start with that because as a workshop tune, it's, it's, it's fairly accessible and easy to pick up. And um, I'll play it through and, um, and then we'll play it through slowly. Um, technically, not too much to really get your knickers in a twist about them. Um, a bold troop time, so I think you don't want to be too slow, you don't want to be dragging, it should be trotting along quite nicely. So, yeah, the, the Jacobite War song, which I probably first heard fair record now, Ron, Ron Ganella, who was a great fiddler. Um, certainly, 60s and 70s would have been his period when he was best kind of into the 80s as well. And um, I think I learned it originally, put it into a set for one of his collections that it was included in. So, in that, I think it was called the, Re the Rebel War Song, but in this collection, it's called the Jacobite War Song. So, I'll play it through for a start for you. <laughs> I've written it and actually I would probably 
may play it quite the way I've just played it, but um, you can play it obviously, but I think as I was playing there I was feeling inclined to bow it slightly differently. So so there's not really much to say about that, um, it's, it's a simple wee tune, but it, there's a huge difference in how it comes across by how you play it. So I think try and get a wee bit of lift into that and um, get a good tempo. If it's too slow it'll drag, um, too quick and it loses that kind of jaunty feel. Um, but the nature of tuna, it says bold troop time, but I would interpret that as you play it with a bit of swing, a bit of swagger. Um, to my mind that's really what it's needed. So anyway, let's go back and just play it through a few times, nice and slow for a start. Um, only fiddle players out there that's following the music, I've got a fourth finger in there um, and that's really just to keep it in the one string rather than have to cross up to the A for the D and then straight back down again. Okay, good exercise for your crannies. Okay, here we go. Two, three. really. Um, I would be inclined to need to overdo the pauses but that's just my personal taste. Obviously they're marked in the end of each half and because they're repeated you could potentially do it four times. To me I think um, saving it till the end is is mere how I would do it just for my taste. Um, the other things to watch these um, A sharps or B flats whatever you want to call them. Um, you have to be pretty brisk with them then on one finger so it needs to be crisply done um, could, could be potentially quite sloppy yeah I could mark it crisp I would do it with a, a sort of staccato style yeah it's like somebody paying a spew you can it's bleh, bleh. So try and keep it a bit more punchy than that. So crisp but clearly defined notes within that little bit. So um, first finger, pull it back, straight back up again. So a good first finger workout there. You'll have a really good first finger playing this tune. Um, that's Technically that's the, the only really... Uh, vaguely tricky thing I would say the the pausing is an interpretation but I would imagine if you can the song it might make more sense but as a tune I would be inclined to wait until the end of the tune for that type of thing but I, I've never heard it sung and that that is the kind of thing with this sort of music for it makes more sense when you hear the lyrics done in context with the melody but as a piece of music on its own I, I would certainly just did that last time so anyway let's go through again play it twice again steady first time second time we'll pick it up a wee bit and then we'll push on <laughs>
Mach ich top. So, a nice wee brisk tune that, um, I rather like it, I've not played it for quite a long time, but um, yeah, we'll move on, the Rebel War song, it's a great name that. So, let's have a look through the book, and then we we'll come to this tune, Glengarry's Fox Hunter, and I suppose it's Neil Brock there, I'm not a Gaelic speaker, so I'm not to start trying to do my own interpretation of it. Translation, but um, Glengarry's Fox Hunter. Um, I have played this as a jig, which works really quite well. But it's um, it's certainly it's uh, written down as a it's a slow tune, so a slow ear. So we'll play it like that, and again, it gives you plenty of time with these uh, two flats. Get your fingers through them, um, but you can play it as a as a jig. I've certainly done that um, at workshops even. Because it was a tune that I think most folk had never heard. I mean, you can play it like this. <laughs> you get the idea. So it's a, it's a nice tune, that. Um, but let's just play it as an air. So I'm going to play it, just join in. It's slow, so you've got time to, to dive in and hang on. So here we go. Glengarry's Fox Hunter. Tune that um, I do like it. I haven't played it for a while, but um, I just fairly typical with slow airs. None in this that I wouldn't do in any other slow air. Um, try and get some dynamics, light and shade into the tune. Um, it makes a huge difference for well painting a picture, telling a story. So um, every few bars is a phrase. I would say four bars in this particular tune, so that every four bars there should be a easing up a little, just take a breath. That's what it feels like. 
and then you do the next four bars and that gives the tune a, a nice kind of human feel a sense of, sense of proportion sense of phrasing and within that you want some color then i just do the same thing in monotone all the way through uh, i've done it before can i recite tama shanter on it <laughs> Chuck my bill is Levy Street and Ruthie neighbours, neighbours made the market days away in late voting hour. Yeah, about falling asleep listening to that. I impressive as it is to hear somebody that can do the whole thing, it's pretty dull to hear it done like that. Um, you want somebody that can phrase it and tell the story. So we are slow here, that's what you're, you're doing. Now, Glengarry's Fox Hunter, I, I did a kind of this as, um, I mean, you've folk would hear Fox Hunter horses, I suppose, but it's maybe the man that was employed by Glengarry to catch his foxes like a gamekeeper so I'm not entirely sure I maybe should have gone and checked but I didn't so there you go that's all you're getting so let's play it again it's a nice tune and um, try and um, play it with feeling So um, that tune, it, it's not a particularly long tune, you could easily, as a soloist, you could play that through twice, I would say quite comfortably. Mess lawyers, um, unless there's an ensemble, I would tend to play them once really because it starts getting difficult to, to do something different because even though the, the melody repeats, the story needs to move on and you, you should really um, kind of develop a story a wee bit, do something different when you play it the second time. Tune like this where you've got an A and a B part which are both repeated, um, I would play each half differently on the repeat. So I would never play it exactly the same why each time I would. Um, it might be more dramatic, um, there should be maybe a mere sense of crescendo at which point it, it's louder or pro progressively getting louder and it's pushing the tempo at the same time, or you can play it more ten tenderly, and it's going to be slower and more quiet, and you can hang on notes, kind of coming off one note on the other, can sound very much like somebody sighing. So that's the sort of things that will add a lot of value to your slow ears, make them something that folk will want to listen to and hang on to for to the start to the finish. So, um, Ah, let's play it again once more and then we'll move on to the Strath Spade, which actually is called Glengarry as well, so these two tunes are definitely related. <laughs> right.
So there you go. Um, obviously, you know how to play it, how I played it. You could phrase it differently. You can colour it, add the dynamics to suit yourself. But certainly, try to avoid playing it on one level in strict time. You can actually. I mean, you could play that for dancing. To actually play it as a waltz um, or a jig, which I demonstrated earlier. play it as a waltz but if you're playing it as a solo piece as an air um, avoid that strictness of tempo just have some ebb and flow to it because so, if I play it like this you see what I mean concerned that's much much better so there we go we'll move on for Glen Gary's fox hunter to the man himself Glen Gary one of the island chieftains uh, so a spate it's an A so a good accessible key for a fiddle player um, I'll just play it through the once to let you hear it and then we will play it through slowly a few times um, yeah, I'll come to it in a minute, to bits and pieces I want to say about the style, but we'll just play it through for a start. Lots of snap bows in this, it's a good thing for practicing the snaps, because um, the one thing to remember about snap bows, fly them snappy. <laughs> Sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised, but they should hear that snap, it's kind of key part of Strispe playing. <laughs> Regardless of how far the notes are, they should be equally snappy every time. They should never be weaker because they're harder to play. That's um, beholden on, the, on the, the player to kind of get get their way around that. So um, plenty of snap. So play it a bit slower. Um, I took that fairly steady. I would I would certainly play that quicker if I was playing it as a solo piece myself. But I thought we'll. We'll car Connie, we'll just go easy with it. So let's go back to the beginning, a bit slower, nice and steady, plenty of snap, okay? Other than that, there's no really any updriven bows or kind of things like that, even unisons, a couple of aspects of Strathspey playing potentially that you can get that are definitely going to make it harder to play. Um, no really things like turns in this particular tune. So you can really focus on the, the note values, getting the short notes short, long notes not um, really pulled out, which is true on a Scottish fiddle tune really, which has got a lot in common with piping in that respect. So, back to the beginning. Three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
try it a bit slower. If that suits you, we'll try that again. It's a good tune. I, I really like it. It's got it's got an old feel. I mean, it is an old tune, so probably it set more than certainly dates me between 1715 and 1745. But that said, I mean, because it was collected then, it could be considerably older. Um, I just don't care. That's a simple answer. I'm not an oracle. <laughs> I don't know the answers, but there you go. But it is a good tune. I really like it. So let's have a go then. Back to the beginning. Nice and steady. I'm going to play it the second time. Back up to speed and then we'll move on to the real. But um, I hope you're enjoying the tune anyway. I hope you're enjoying all these tunes. Right. Let's go. Three, four. <laughs> I just wanted to say something briefly about um, how we play the snaps on the whole, nay always because there are exceptions, on the whole try to play them in the top third of the bow um, and it comes for the snap of the wrist like that. Um, was it might have been in something totally unrelated but I mean um, I had um, piping lessons for a while. I was actually getting on quite well, but I just had enough hours in the day to milk coos for my dad. Work in a firm, um, practice my fiddle, and I was getting busy with that and learn the pipes. But I had had really um, the notion to learn the pipes so that my interpretation of pipe music would be better. I thought that would be a helpful thing, and I don't think I'm wrong in that. I think that would have been helpful, but um, I had to kind of give up. But my, my piping teacher, um, pipe major Ian Grant, he was a great guy, come from a piping family, and um, he was captured at St. Valery um, during the Second World War with the 51st Highland Division. And when he got back, when they were released eventually, and they made their way back, they made sure they got back to the British and American lines rather than the Russians, because they thought they might not get back. <laughs> so they kind of hightailed it back to the West, and um, they had a tough time with it. There was a lot of good stories, but... He was made um, pipe major of one of the battalions of the, the, the Gordon Highlanders, so um, a real authority on piping. Um, his father, Willie Grant, was a great piper, wrote in the tune The Lonach Gathering, which is a great standard, and uh, folk like Gordon Duncan have even recorded it, so the family really write good music. Um, Ian's grandsons, James and John Stevenson, are good pals of mine, so Ian said, when you're playing your barrels on the chanter if I try and demonstrate. So this is not going to work now, but you've got your right hand bottom and you play your barrels. It's, well, the way you play it, that he taught me, you tap and then drag. So it's, so it's really quick. Um, I'm wondering why it could sometimes be moving the finger face side to side, but he was definitely tap and drag. And that gives you a that kind of really crisp feel. And Fatih said about your cranny, when you play that barrel, your finger should be like a whip. And I, I that, that really stuck in my mind, that, that phrase. I really liked the imagery of that, that your, your finger should be like a whip when you play your barrels. And um, I've heard Dougie Lawrence, um, who was my, t my Scottish fiddle tutor, describing it, um, your barrels, um, they should be like lightning. And it's, it's that sort of thing, it's that snap of the wrist. A lot of attack on the down, slower on the up. But when you're playing set like a couple together, it's easy for the bow to end up doing it at the bottom. And if that happens, it's near that you kind of play it, but if it happens very quickly because you're at the heel, 
your ability to play the long note is kind of really hampered. So, um, when I down a lot of attack, try to get as close to the tip as possible and slow on the up. You just have to slot that long note so that you're not going to warp here. So you're keeping it up in the top half as much as possible. So for both of these, that's quite tricky actually because you've got a big jump for the G string up to the A here. So, so you're in three strings within two beats. So you see what I mean? That, that snappy. Keep it the top bit. Snap it close to the tip with the quick down bow and then slow in the up trying so it means that you're in the top part of the bow. Same sort of thing, but always maintaining the snappiness at all times. Right, let's go through this once more and then we're going to go into the last tune, which is a real a great favourite this and it, it remains popular. It's never really been a tune that's disappeared too much. It's always been popular. It's a real cut, the Haggis, which is actually written by Captain Simon Fraser himself. Generally speaking, you hear it um, way north of the Grampians and um, the Haggis, the two of them go together. Same key. But they have a real feel of, sort of blending together perfectly, and that's something you want to do when you put your sets together. But we'll come to that in a minute, and um, we'll finish playing through Glengarry once at a fit, I would say, would be an acceptable dance speed, but steady. Okay, so maybe me for Scottish country dancing. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> recorded it with the North of the Grampians and I don't know if they were written to, to go together but they certainly do go very well. If I play North of the Grampians in Haggis you'll see what I mean so when I do North of the Grampians but it's to, to get that transition you'll see how well suited they are and you might ask why did you need to do that as a spade? Well I just decided to do something different. <laughs> many times and indeed I play them. <laughs> I play them again myself um, have done a lot in the past near for a long time funnily enough so um, 
I might have to rehabilitate that set and start playing it more, more often. But they're, they're great tunes. Uh, Bathing C, um, not such like a common key. Um, well, certainly not as common as D and A. There's no question about that. Or even G. But um, no, there's a lot of good tunes in C. So um, I played it a wee bit <laughs> different if it's written there. I, I, I've kind of got my own version. I play that. I'm not sure if it comes from another, uh, another setting or I have just adapted it to suit myself. Um, as will happen, I mean, that's why you get different um, variations because folk hear tunes and pick them up or they pick them up by ear for somebody else who's picked it up by ear or they, they'll hear somebody's interpretation. Oh, I like that wee bit, that wee change is good. And you'll hear things popping in to tunes that maybe weren't initially uh, notated that way. But certainly I, th I think um, we'll play it just as is in the book just now. And I'll just have to try and um, follow if it's in front of my nose. So, the haggis. I don't feel I need to tell Abdi what a haggis is. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Abdi has a fair idea. It's like a pudding. Well, a pudding. I say a pudding. It's like a sausage pudding type thing. Like a black pudding. Um... I'm, I'm going to stop, I'm going to get carried away and be speaking about this for 5-10 minutes, but certainly it's the, ma the, the main feature of a Burns supper and um, I'm not sure if it was entirely done as a, a, bit of a, a bit of a fun poem, but Robert Burns certainly wrote the address to the haggis and um, I think the idea being it was um, seen as being kind of coarse, homely fare for the Kind of the rustics, the, the the peasant types that the aristocracy and the gentry would look down their noses at that. But um, Burns was very much speaking in defence of this, which um, put put well, I was going to say put lead in your pencil. That's what Nafta meant, but that might be true as well. So there you go. <laughs> so the haggis, I think it is considered Scotland's um, national dish. Um, some folks seem to despise it in other countries, I reckon. Why? Because I love it. And my number one son, Hector, the oldest boy, is notoriously fussy. We do get him to eat a variety of stuff, actually. He's getting better. But haggis is someone he's I liked. And um, if we were doing haggis, he would go back without fail for seconds and thirds. So it's damn tasty. It's good stuff. So if I ever hear somebody saying, oh, haggis, disgusting, get out of my road. I don't want to hear for you. There you go, that's me hit my rat. So, the haggis. excited by the wonderful tune or possibly the thought of a haggis but a uh, great tune the haggis um, very distinctive there's nothing really sounds quite like it I would say and that is quite I think a tune it doesn't sound like anything else that's been written but it's still within the, the, the kind of the framework go a reel it's in 4-4 four, four time um, it has to be a certain tempo but um, no it's a fantastic tune a uh, few things to watch out for this um, triplets Crack 
crisp and clean, you've got to hear every note. second has to be there all the time. If you can plant that second across the A and E string and just if you've got littler fingers you might need to roll a bit but I've got big kind of firmer's fingers so <laughs> not as big as it used to be. Mate. So I barely have to ro roll my hand at all. I can just plant my finger on the strings and cover both strings, so because you don't want to be done for a second to a second, it's really awkward. But again, B flat. So let's play it through slowly, and then we'll pick it up a wee bit, and I'd say that would be enough for one night. So, let's have a go. The Haggis. Again, see when you've got these slurs, use the bow, then I just tickle the strings in the bit middle. And you've got to work a little harder because you're using mere bow, but what you get is mere tone, mere volume, mere power. You're, you're projecting your sound much more if you use all your bow. So I'll just play that to repeat again. So I hope you've enjoyed a few tunes about Fairy Cup and Simon Fraser collection. Um, it's often called the Noki collection because that's very comfy, but um, well, we're trying to get your hands on. Almost never see original copies, but um, there's, a, there's a reasonable copy that, is it Cranford Publications did it? Paul Cranford, Uren. I think he's in Cape Breton. Let me have a look here. Yeah, Paul Stuart Cranford. St Paul's Island, so you can still get that quite easily. Now, I've, I've got an original, actually, and there you go, I've got an original, but I would never really use it for working it, so I find this works really well, and it's got a ring binder on the back, it makes it really usable, because I'm sure Abdi's had music books, they've got to burst the spine practically to get them to sit on a music stand, so um, these work really well, I like them as uh, functional 
um, manuscripts to work for, but it's a great collection and got a fairly good um, bit in the back dis explaining the background to, to some of the, well, to all of the tunes. So um, if you hadn't got a copy, I would say go and get. Um, so there, there endeth my workshop tonight. Um, next week will be something different. It'll be my 21st. 21 again. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's been a while ago since I was 21, but we'll have our 21st um, Live for the Lounge on Friday and um, we'll look at a few good tunes for that, I'm sure. I've got a few um, uh, folk have requested things, so play one or two of them and um, just some good fiddle music, some nonsense and of course some songs for Shona. So um, if you've enjoyed this, um, look in next week if you're needing anything else. Certainly it'll be up online for you to see for forever probably um if you've enjoyed it um, and you want to contribute to the tip jar it's www dot um paypal dot me forward slash paul anderson shona dawn shona dawn because couldn't get donaldson and it's too long so there you go and um, thanks very much folks and um take care and we'll maybe see you next week or possibly on friday have a good night <laughs>